guys thank you for watching um thank you for watching welcome to my channel nurse the educator where i get to share a little bit of wisdom in my experience um from me to you and i hope it is helpful if it is guys do me a favor and click that like button even if you got one thing out of this click the like button that lets me know that um my content makes a difference in some way okay so real quick this video is really just to share um, a bit about my experience as a nursing instructor and just to kind of share the pros and cons with you to see maybe that might be a right fit for you so guys just like you probably watching this video I got burnt out working in the hospital I've worked all my years over 10 years in the hospital that's been a bulk of my experience um, so I got burnt out I got burnt out I did agency I did travel nursing I still got burnt out so many different things right I've done clinic I got burnt out but I was looking for something that is fulfilling and something that will not tire me out right and I also wanted to keep up with my skills right that's a big thing with nurses we want to keep our skills so I'm here to tell you consider becoming a nursing instructor right consider becoming a nursing instructor and wait 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 you can be a nursing instructor with just a bachelor's right just a bachelor's in nursing if you're thinking okay i need my master's you do not and i will tell you why you do not need your master's to be a nursing instructor and here's why so if you are teaching in an lpn program so lpns are licensed practical nurses or lvn licensed vocational nurses these are also nurses, right? They're considered nurses. They do take the NCLEX, it's called the NCLEX PN, um, versus RNs who take the NCLEX RNs. These are nurses, they do have some limited scopes, right? There's some limits to what LPNs can do, such as they can't do IV pushes, and some, some states and some areas they can't do um, blood administration. They always need an RN if they have to give blood or any other um, medication, right? Any other critical medication. So, so apart from those limitations, so these are still nursing students, right? So you're still teaching, they still go through foundations, MedSurge 1, MedSurge 2, um, pediatrics, obstetrics, uh, pharmacology, leadership, they still do all those regular nursing courses, right? So for an LPN program, they only require you to have a bachelor's to be able to teach an LPN. So if you're an RN with your bachelor's degree, right, in nursing, you can teach at an LPN program, okay? You do not need a master's to teach, right? You can teach, you can, if you have your master's, you can also teach an LPN program, but if you have your master's, you can teach in an RN program, okay? So that's not really, that's the main limitation. So if you are a bachelor's um, degree holder in nursing, do not think you need to get your master's to start teaching. You can start teaching an LPN program, see how you like it, and if that's for you, you can get your master's and teach an RN um, RN program or university, okay? So that is, let's get that out the way, right? So let's continue this video. So I only have my, my bachelor's. I will be honest and open. I've only had my bachelor's. I had no interest in getting my master's. None, zero, zilch, none, right? That's another story for another day. So I had no interest in getting my master's. Um, I had my bachelor's and so I always wrote off um, being able to teach. I thought I could never be a clinical instructor. I could never be a nursing instructor because I don't have my master's. Um, so in 2020, no, not 2020, sorry, 2021, um, I found out the program reached out to me. I guess I applied on Indeed without knowing. I don't know how it happened, but I've been teaching at um, a, a nursing school, an LPN school, right? A practical nursing college ever since then. So I have really enjoyed it, guys. Like, it's not what you think it's actually really rewarding it is stressful but it's a different kind of stress right so in the hospital you're dealing with the stress of all the orders the stress of family members the stress of the patient the stress of documentation the stress of getting sued if you make a mistake there's, there's so many right so many stresses the stress of your bladder because you haven't peed for 12 hours <laughs> and so there's those are a lot more physical stress guys as an instructor I gotta take this off for a second. I don't have those stresses. Listen, I don't deal with family members. I deal with the student. I don't deal with all the crazy orders. No, you have a lot more freedom. You have the syllabus that tells you what you need to teach these students, you know, when their test is due. Things are pretty much outlined, 
you're not free flowing as an instructor, right? The school has a guide that you need to follow. You follow those guides, right? And the rules are very clear. The regulation is very clear. You go according to that, okay? So as you know, a clinical instructor, they tell you what skills to teach uh, the students, right? So if you're worried about losing your skills, to be honest with you, you teach those skills so much to the students that those skills become like, like innate almost. Like you know those skills like the back of your hand because you're forced to teach it so much, right? So as a nurse, of course, I know how to insert a Foley, right? But when all these years of just teaching these nurse, these um, nursing students how to insert a Foley, it's helping me, right? So as you're teaching someone else, you're refreshing those skills, you're relearning those skills, and you're gonna be in the clinical setting, you know, teaching them how to insert those skills, how to insert a Foley, how to insert, um, insert an NG tube, how to do this, this, this. So you do not, I'm, I don't feel like I've lost my skills. I feel like I've actually gotten better in my skills, right? I feel like I've been forced to actually read up on how to insert, do certain things in a proper manner. Because sometimes when you're on the floor, you kind of do your own thing, right? You know how we learned in nursing school and then you get on the floor and you finesse it and you figure it out and you kind of do it your own way, but you're still doing it good, but you have your own way of doing it, right? So as a nursing instructor, it forces you to restudy your skills. You got to relearn it. You have to make sure you know the skills, you know how to present it to the students. So therefore, it's giving you a refresher every single day, right? When you're teaching the students, you're refreshing yourself on how to do those skills, okay? The only con that I will say is usually if you are an instructor, you're working Monday through Friday, right? A lot of people that work the, uh, the floor, the hospital floor, they love the three 12 hour shifts, but guys, those, those you, sometimes you, you have to give up something to get something better, if that makes sense. Pay wise, you will be very surprised that you will get paid more or about the same um, when you are a nursing instructor. I was shocked, guys. So when I got offered, I started off PRN and I got the first offer, I was shocked that it was the equivalent of how much I was making in the hospital. And I said, I was like, what? I wish I would have known this all these years. I would have been a clinical instructor since, right? I would have done clinical instructor and maybe worked on the side or worked part-time in the hospital. Um, so just be mindful of that, right? Do your research, um, apply to multiple different schools. You'll be surprised the pay um, will be great. Of course, hospital benefit, you can't really compare that to any other um, benefits, right? But they do try their best. Depending on the school, they will try their best um, to make sure that they give you good benefits, okay? So we talked about the hours, we talked about, um, those are really like the pros, right? And the only con I mentioned was the hours, Monday is most likely gonna be Monday through Friday. If you choose to just be a clinical instructor, a PRN clinical instructor, you're looking at about um, eight hours, right? So depending on the program, it might be two days of eight hours a week or one day if it's a part-time program one day of eight hour clinicals um, at a facility. So most of the LPNs, you'll see them, you'll be working either like at a long-term care facility or sometimes they can get hospitals, right? Depending on the affiliation the school has in that community, they can get access to hospitals. So, but just um, brace yourself that you will be doing, if you do decide to teach only LPNs, most likely you will be doing their rotation in a long-term care setting, okay? And not necessarily hospital, okay? Um, another con of, you know, grading, right? It's not a lot, but of course you have grading, but a lot of the systems nowadays, everything's electronic. So if you decide to be a nursing instructor, meaning you're teaching theory, um, teaching them the theoretical stuff, right, of nursing, um, you will have to kind of grade their quizzes or tests, uh, depending on your school. Once again, sometimes it could be paper grading. Sometimes if your school's a little bit more advanced, it will be done online where they do their tests via computer. They come in the classroom and sit and take the test on the computer. Um, but if it is paper, just be mindful of that, that you will have to grade all that stuff. If you decide to just be a clinical instructor, you will have to grade some care plans, right? There will be some care plans you're gonna have to grade. Um, you're gonna have to do like a skills test, um, final skills performance test, you know, like we did in nursing school, where they wanna make sure that you're understanding, um, you understand the concept, you understand the skills, you're able to perform the skills, right? Um, in a safe manner. Um, apart from that, and the other thing is you're dealing with students, of course. Um, 
whenever you're dealing with human beings, there is always that kind of opportunity of dealing with attitudes, dealing with, you know, students that are not really performing, putting in the work, students that want to complain all the time, um, and so forth and so on. But at the end of the day, if you, um, if you're like me and you've learned to kind of dissociate work from your own life, where it's like, even if, you know, uh, patients are, are horrible or whatever, you're able to just leave that at work. If you're able to disconnect the two, this is perfect for you, right? So even if the students complain and all that stuff, I don't carry that home with me. You know, I do, I teach as best as I can. And I just realize that everybody has their own thing going on and it has nothing to do with me, okay? Um, that is all, guys. Um, I hope I didn't miss anything. Any questions you want to know about being a clinical instructor or nursing instructor, please let me know. Um, please let me know. And depending on your school, sometimes they might give you a specific class to teach consistently, or they might have you teach all the classes. So it just varies based on your specific school. I've worked at a school where you just teach, you know, you're, you're the med surge nurse, you're the med surge instructor or the foundation or med surge two instructor or pharmacology instructor. I've worked at one where you keep, you teach, you follow that group all the way to graduation. So you teach their foundations, you teach their med surge one, med surge two, OB, pediatrics, uh, pharmacology leadership you literally teach them all the way to graduation so that's something to ask when you're interviewing for the position uh, for the position um, if that's their process and what their process is um, guys I hope this was helpful but I really want people to kind of really consider especially my nurses out there who are tired a lot of you guys who are burned out and tired I want you to really consider um, becoming a nursing instructor, especially if you if you have a heart to teach others. If you are one of those, you were like me, who always used to take on the nursing students um, on the floor, I definitely want to encourage you to consider applying to become a nursing instructor. Okay, guys. Guys, I hope this video was helpful. Like I said, please like the video. Let me know if this was helpful. Um, and let me know, are you thinking about it? Are you, are you a nursing instructor? How has it been? Do you ever wish, you know, do you miss bedside? Because I will be honest, I don't miss bedside. <laughs> and if you do, there's so many things you can do PRN, but after doing this, I just, I don't really miss the, the wear and tear on the body that bedside has to offer. So, okay, let me know. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Take care.